Welcome back to the show. Let's pick up where we left off with James Sarkos, Chief of Police for the Atlantic City Police Department. Chief, so we were talking a little bit about in the early part of the first uh, segment about your education. Tell us a little bit about your master's, uh, you know, about from Seton Hall University. Yeah, so while I was an Atlantic City police officer, I decided I want to go back to school. And, you know, my parents had stressed the importance of education and always being a student of your profession. So I did the New Jersey State Police Police Graduate Studies Program through Seton Hall University, and I got a master's degree in human resources training and development. That's awesome. Oh, uh, gosh. Again, so you continued that education. And when you spoke a little bit about Atlantic City and what you do, uh, some of the initiatives, some of the partnerships that you have uh, with, uh, whether it's the prosecutor's office of Atlantic County, your municipals around the city and whatnot, neighboring, and with the state. Tell us a little bit about that, how it's working out. Yeah, so we kind of pride ourselves of having great relationship with all of our partners at the local, county, state, and federal level. So we have coordinations that's going on on a daily basis with the FBI, with the DEA, with the New Jersey State Police, with the Atlantic County Prosecutor's Office, with the Atlantic County Sheriff's Department. As you know, Sheriff Scheffler used to be an Atlantic City police officer. So I feel we have a very good working relationship with all those agencies. And it's because what we talked about earlier with Atlantic City seeing all those you know, millions of visitors a year and the potential of terrorism. It's crucial that we have those relationships, those working relationships. And, you know, the, the collaboration, I think, is at an, an all-time high, and we're going to continue to do that in the future. And let's face it, folks, uh, you know, when, when you have crowds like we have and when you have just visitors that we have, the bad guy tends to show up sometimes, you know, so to speak. Sure. So you have to be on point. I'd love to talk about some of the some of the projects you have, uh, whether it's uh, Tip Four One One. I don't know if projects the right word, but some of those uh, neat ways for folks to give information to the police department without having to identify themselves and those who want to identify themselves. So Tip Four One One has been a really great application for us, and anyone who wants to communicate with the police department but re remain anonymous has the option of doing that through the Tip Four One One system. So if you go to your text message and you send a text to Tip Four One One and you start the text out with ACPD, it'll come to us. Or another way you can do it that's kind of easier is you just download the ACPD Tip 411 app. You go to the App Store, just search Atlantic City Police Tip 411. It'll come right up, download the app. And I have no way of knowing who you are. You'll come up the system as some random number. And the nice thing about it is I can have a two-way conversation with you. So you text me, I text you back, you can send me video. So we monitor that 24-7. Now, I, I must stress that it is not for emergency situations. If you're in an emergency, call 911 because we're always gonna answer 911 first. But if you wanna to talk to us and you wanna be anonymous, you can do that safely through the service. And like I said, I have no way of knowing who you are, 100% anonymous, but we monitor that 24 seven. We monitor it in our communication center and also in our dispatch center. And then several of our, of our detectives have access to it. So if someone gives us information, we're gonna to try to respond back to you as soon as possible. And we've made many arrests off of doing this. We've solved cold cases off of doing this. I mean, it's a really great application that we have. So Chief, I can attest to that personally. I'll put myself out there. I know I've used it uh, throughout the uh, last few years and I stick around to see what would happen. And you guys and gals were out there and, and it makes us feel safer. And uh, I used it, like I said, not, not to hide or whatnot. I just wanted to see, hey, you know, here it is right there. There was some illegal going ons yeah. and you guys came out and did, did your job. And I could not uh, uh, be more thankful for that for some folks who don't want to reach out like that. So as we're talking about that, though, something struck me in my mind. I know we're going to bounce around a little bit. The ADD kicks in with me a little bit. But your community policing, I mean, it's one yeah. of the things I, I remember a time back years ago, uh, you know, there was a lot of, uh, not, not just here in Atlantic City, but throughout the country, you know, uh, police brutality, this, that. I have never seen more police uh, community effort uh, by any department. And there's we have quite a few. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, we, we could probably talk for hours about community policing in Atlantic City, but we have the NCO program, which is the neighborhood community officers. There's 15 of them. There's two assigned per ward, six wards in Atlantic City for 12 of the officers, and then the other three are doing homeless outreach. And we actually just got a grant from the Department of Justice COPS program that it's going to allow us to expand and double the NCO program. So we're very shortly be hiring another 15 NCO officers, and they'll be working 16 hours a day said eight hours a day, so really happy about that. But some of the things they do, community barbecues, we'll have a barbecue every summer in one of each of the six wards. Uh, holiday season, we give out 300 turkeys for Thanksgiving, give them out at 
in front of the PAL building, also get them at Busby Village. We do a PAL Thanksgiving Day dinner for the kids at the Police Athletic League. Uh, we, we took the kids from PAL on a trip to Orlando, Florida to learn about STEM. And that's a really cool thing where they go down there, they meet with the, with the great personnel from Universal Studios, they give the kids a little lesson about how they use science and technology and the arts in creating the rides. They give the kids an opportunity to, to input in one of the rides and then they change some of the components of that ride based on their input. And then the kids actually ride the ride to see what they just did and how it changed it. So we, we try to encourage the kids to look at careers in the future and let them know that these things are attainable for them. And if they stay focused and you know, get an education and stay in school, they can obtain high paying jobs like that, that are enjoyable. One of the things I like to say to people, you know, when they're looking for a career, you got to pick something you love. And if you love it, you know, it won't be feel like you're working. I just feel like you're doing something every day that you're passionate about and care about. And then it's not work. It's just having a good time. So we want to make sure that the kids know that all these options are available to them. Wrestling, we're going to be introducing junior wrestling through the PAL Center. Yeah. That's a partnership we're doing with the Coalition for a Safer Community. I was actually a wrestler in high school. I feel like I benefited greatly from that sport. It's a very dedicated sport. Uh, you got to have a lot of commitment to do that sport. And we don't have junior wrestling in Atlantic City, only in the high school level. So this will get the younger kids involved in wrestling. We just got our mats delivered very recently, so that program will be running out very shortly. But we do things like coffee with a cop, cupcake right. with a cop. We did dancing with a cop. We do the homework completion club with Stockton University, where we meet with the kids in Stanley Homes Village, help them complete their homework. Uh, we'll read to the kids in the kindergarten class. Um, we'll do breakfast with the kids. I just went to the Sovereign Avenue School and had breakfast with all the second graders. Uh, really good event. We'll do canine demonstrations in all the schools for career day. We do national night out. We do the junior police academy. We do the citizen police academy. Shop I mean, it just cop. goes shop with a cop. Yeah. Shop with the Cop is probably one of my favorite events that we do. We'll take around 150 kids to the Walmart in Egg Harbor Township, give each kid a $150 gift card and also a $50 gift card to Shopper for them to take home with them. Each kid partners with a police officer and they go shopping. And what's really cool about it is you would think the kids are just going to buy for themselves yeah. toys, but it's not what they do. They sit there and try to pick out presents for their brothers, their sisters, their parents. Really heartwarming. It is. And as a, a proud and uh, so honored to be a board member for the Atlantic City Pal, I've been to a couple of those shop with the cops and coffee with a cop and whatnot. It's amazing what uh, you're doing. Uh, in Atlantic City. And listen, we're going to have you back. We got about a minute left. I want to touch on some of the, uh, your grandfather, you know, when you were um, uh, Chief uh, Supreme Court Justice Alito, yeah. you got about a minute to talk about that. Tell us what that was like, because when I see him on the screen, what just recently happened with you? Sure. So I was recently sworn in as the chief of the Atlantic City Police Department. I had been serving in an acting capacity for a little over two years, but I had reached out to Supreme Court Justice Sam Alito, who was a New Jersey guy. He actually was born in the Trenton area. So I reached out to Justice Alito and asked him if he would do me the honor of swearing me in. And I thought it was really cool to be sworn in by someone who represents the highest court in the land. Uh, happily, he agreed. He swore me in. And I guess the rest is history. But it was really cool. Uh, a lot of people were blown away by it that a Supreme Court justice would take the time to swear in a chief of police for the Atlantic City Police Department. And he has told me that I'm the only person he's ever done that for. So I feel really blessed and honored that he was able to do that for me. How about that? That's awesome. When he came up on the screen, I was like, uh oh, something happened here, some type of glitch or whatnot. It was an awesome event. They did a great job at Jim Whalen Boardwalk Hall in the Adrian Phillips Ballroom. Chief, we so appreciate you coming out. We're going to do this again, hopefully, next semester. We're going to have you on the radio show. Thank you so much. This man will keep us safe and his men and women of the Atlantic City Police Department. Folks, stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. <laughs>